on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Layman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Chris Plank joins us to talk all things OU athletics, including football, golf, baseball, and with him being the play-by-play voice of Sooner Softball, we preview the Women's College World Series. He even sticks around for winners and losers of the week, people. It's great. You won't want to miss it. Please download and subscribe to the podcast, rate it five stars, and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right? Our man Michael Hosty will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Wednesday, June 1st, and you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience. There are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including blackjack, blackjack match, roulette, and Teddy's favorite, craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts, and the Beats and Bites Festival is rolling. Everclear with Sister Hazel and Deep Blue Something will be performing June 18th. It's $5 general admission, and kids under 12 get in free. There will be a ton of food trucks, and there will be all kinds of things for the kiddos to do, including face painting and an inflatable obstacle course. To buy tickets, visit Riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Now, we're recording this on Tuesday night because we all got some stuff going on Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. But, Teddy, it's been a long time coming. I know it. This, I'm stoked. this is what I'm going to call the Chris Plank guest appearance episode. Plankster. Let's go. How we just, okay. We're, we're all about full disclosure, disclosure here on this podcast. And the, the truth is boys, I am, I am operating on some <laughs> dicey internet out <laughs> in California. So Got that the internet out there, I just, I want to forewarn people. There could be a couple rough patches in this podcast, but I swear I tried my, I'm currently running a hundred, a hundred foot cat six cable from a router in a garage up into this room that I'm in. Like I'm trying my best people. So I'm sorry <laughs> if there are some, there's some bumpy moment, moments, but plank, all of this OU stuff was coming together all at once. And Teddy and I were talking about, there was like, there's only one man to bring on to talk about it all with. And that is you, sir. I'm blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> and by the way, the best part of all of this is imagining Gabe in wine country, beautiful Napa. And Ted, the first thing he's worried about is the internet connection. People, you do not understand the commitment to this podcast. True story. When, when we went to, Dallas two years ago, whenever I called the Cotton Bowl and you, me and Cootie all rode down together, right? Our first stop was the hotel. I'm like, Gabe's been in there for a while because he was dropping things off. What was he doing? Checking the internet connection for the post game. (laughs) That's what it's all about guys. As a, it was funny. I was doing yard work yesterday and I was listening to the Q and a episode and I almost texted you because I was thinking how most of us are like that, right? We think about our failures more than our successes, but I mean, Gabe, come on, getting pulled over on the Friday before OU Notre Dame. <laughs> that had to be some terrible vibes that you were feeling heading into that weekend. Bad, bad vibes. Bad bro. vibes, bad, bad vibes. vibes. But, I, hey, I, I'm pumped to be on, guys. We'll have some fun. Everything that's going on right now is in my wheelhouse, and uh, I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Let's, let's start with what we always start with, and that's OU football. And not a ton going on, although – Summer workouts just getting kicked off for those players. That is, uh, that's going to be a completely different animal that they're about to uh, go through with Jerry Schmidt. But Plank, this is this is going to be kind of part interview, part just three man <laughs> discussion. We'll we'll see what it ends up sounding like. But first off, d- would you have any interest in participating in a Brent Venables football camp? Any interest at all? How do you think that would go for you? Probably not good um, because if, if you remember Gabe and Ted, you were on the broadcast, 
when Coach Venables came on with us before the Alamo Bowl, you jokingly said, hey, how about Plank as your get-back coach? And <laughs> Venables sized me up and was like, you wouldn't have, he wouldn't stand a chance. So, dude, Ted, I'd be doomed as far as that's concerned. But, hey, um, it, it, isn't it like everybody's dream? I was listening to me. He was on with Toby on Friday. Ted, he made this camp sound like it would be awesome to be a part of for the, for now, obviously not the prospects camp and stuff. That's a whole different world, but kind of this, I don't know. Do I say adult camp that he has going on? Yeah. Um, does sound pretty cool. You know, the, the ladies clinic that they're doing later, I think maybe later in July also sounds really cool. Get to interact with a lot of the players and stuff. Um, I'm guessing just like anything else that he's done so far, it's going to be very detailed, very well done. Um, cover a lot of lot of good topics and good stuff and they've been on top of absolutely everything and I think it took them a while to announce some of these things and when they were going to be just because they wanted to make sure that they had everything right and you know just hearing him talk about it sounds like it's going to be really cool I think the best thing is and this is something that's changed definitely since I was playing and I can't remember with, with you or not Gabe but the players being able to work these camps, I think that's really cool and a nice touch to let them kind of interact and go out there, make a little bit of money, but also, you know, get a little bit of a feeling what some of these coaches do on a day in day out basis. Yeah. And as far as what I'm excited about when it comes to the camps, man, some of the stuff like Miguel Chavis is putting out there, right. Where, Hey, this isn't, this isn't going to be some type of combine. This is going to be football and they're going to get after it. I am. I'm very interested to see some of the reviews that come out from players and their coaches, right? After they go through the camp process, I have a feeling that it's going to be a little different than it's been the last several years, just knowing BB the way that we do and I look forward to, to that reaction. Cause we we've seen, right. We've seen the kind of just the different reaction from recruits when it comes to their visits and stuff like that. I, I, I think the reaction from the players that participate in camp could be, could be rather different than what we've seen in, in the recent past as well. And I look forward to to seeing how some of those guys feel after they go through it. Well, didn't so Lincoln and that crew tried to put on like an adult camp at some point and end up canceling it last minute, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I don't I don't know why. I don't I don't remember any of the details, but I knew that they were trying to do it and for whatever reason it never never came to fruition. I don't know if they didn't have the interest they thought they were going to or or what exactly it was. I think it was as ex I think it was expensive as hell is what I think it ended up being. <laughs> I because I, I remember looking into it and hearing a few people talk about it, it's like oh okay and and maybe maybe I, I think did did COVID hit about the time that they were trying to do that? Maybe I, may, maybe it was around that timing, but I knew it it wasn't it wasn't cheap that's for certain. And I never heard anyone or saw any pictures of anyone who went. Obviously, like you said, Ted. So uh, it got it got eighty six, but. The way Brent Venables made this sound, it sounds awesome. The way Miguel Chavis and everyone else talked about it scared the hell out of me for the for the older camp. But hey, man, this is a this is a massive massive week. You got camps going on. We've got whatever the new version of the barbecue is coming up this weekend. So it's 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 a big time for Oklahoma to really kind of juice up in the recruiting trail. Yeah. So it is. It, it's one of those weird times in the football calendar, but. Of course, with, with OU football, it seems like there's always something happening right now. And, and going back to something we haven't covered on here yet, Ted, we, we got some game times for, for what – we got either a kickoff time or what channel it's going to be on for, what, five games? And looking at the opener, September 3rd, UTEP, 2.30, kickoff. On Ouch. Fox, Plank, Ouch. wear black pants, bud. Yeah, we're yeah, no, doomed. no, we're, we're done. We're, we're finished. I, I've started hydrating now, um, to be honest with you. Dude, Gabe, it's going to be so hot. 
so hot. Why? It's Utah. This is one, and I will be the first one to bid. And we've talked about how 11 a.m. kickoffs are great for for us, right? For the guys on the broadcast. Very greedy. We, we get in, we get out, we get home, we get to drink a little earlier, right? <laughs> 230 for UTEP. I know the fans are going to be like, this is great. But that second half, oh, it's going to be brutal. Absolutely brutal. I will say this, though. I saw it, and... I was, I was excited as, as bad as it's going to suck for me and plank being out there on the sideline when it's five o'clock beating down on us in that second half, I, I was really happy for the fan base because I do think even though it's UTEP that the opener is going to be special, right? Brent Venable's first, first game as head coach is going to be special and the fan base is going to show out. So when I saw that, while it wasn't great for me personally, I am, I'm glad that the fan base will get, uh, get the opportunity to get a little, little more lubed up boys for, or for Brent Venable's debut as a head football coach at OU. My first game at OU was against UTEP. And I think it was like a six o'clock kick. And it was like 108 degrees that day. It was absolutely brutal. Hey, hey, bud, how, how about we don't talk about that, okay? That <laughs> All I'm saying is I, it didn't matter if it was as hot as the surface of the sun that day. <laughs> it was awesome. I had so much damn fun. Um, it was cool. So the point is, like you're saying, the fans are going to be amped up. It's going to be hot. Maybe it's not. You never know what's going to happen. But I don't think it's going to matter except for you and Plank. You and Plank, it will Such matter. Us. Nobody else. Everyone else will be, See, will be locked in. <laughs> uh, Plank, the worst part about it for us is, like the players, everyone's like, oh, man, they're going to have to hydrate. Listen, they train all summer in the right. heat for right. these situations. Like, they, their bodies are accustomed to it. And they've got someone following them around with the water bottle nonstop, right? right? We don't. <laughs> it's going to be rough, man. <laughs> it is. It is. My idea of being out in the heat right now is, is laying on a, a deck chair by my pool, right? And their idea is running sprints and getting ready. So, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be hot. But I've learned this, and I've learned this from listening to, to Teddy a lot on his radio show. And, and I say this with peace and love. People are going to Grinch regardless of what time it starts. I mean, if it's 2.30, like, it's too hot. If it's 6 o'clock, ah, it's too late. I got to go home. If it's 11 a.m., ah, 11 a.m. kick. So I'm just – I'm excited that there's football, right? And it gives us something to talk about. And I know we've got other start times. I'm excited that some games that we thought might be midweek games aren't anymore. There's a lot of things that came out as far as kick times that – uh, I was I was pretty pumped about as a Sooner fan. So week two versus Kent State, that one that one is going to be the debut of the new partnership between Sooner Vision and ESPN Plus, right? That is that is no longer the pay per view game, which I think a lot of fans are <laughs> are very very excited about. Now I will say this: if you're an OU fan and you don't have ESPN Plus, I'm telling you just Go ahead and bite the bullet. Go ahead and buy that thing. You're going to need it in the future. It's just, it's just the reality we're living in, people. And do the bundle with, with Hulu and Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. That's, you're probably getting the most bang for your buck that way. But Kent State, I, I honestly, and I know it was, it was up to the networks, and, and Fox probably looked at that UTEP game and said a lot of people are interested in how OU is going to look in their first game under Venables, but I really wish just from a getting sus- subscribers to ESPN plus because us three, I mean, we're going to be the, all those shows we normally do are going to be on ESPN plus. Now I want people to watch those. And I feel like if the opener would have been on ESPN plus that that would have yeah. been a little, little better for exposure. You know what I mean, Ted? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's kind of tough 
because you're right. It, I think, and I don't Plank probably has a better idea of how it works because they do the draft system and, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that was probably one of their intentions, but perhaps Fox got to it before they could priority wise, but yeah, I'm with you. Um, but you never know. Something could happen week one that has everyone amped up about week two. You just, you never know how things are going to unfold. And if, if I know anything about OU fans, they're going to find a way to watch. So there'll probably be some, some, some eyeballs on that Kent state game, which Kent state has had a really good offense the last several years. Um, you know, they've been like top five offensively in, in college football several years in a row. So maybe taking a step back this year, but there'll be some interest in that one as well, I think. And gosh, I got to imagine it's not, it's not a hundred percent by any means, but, there's already a, a massive percentage of our fan base has to have ESPN plus, right? Sure. I think so. Hey, uh, and by the way, I wish this game was on the road against Kent state. Just so Toby would have to say, welcome to Dick stadium. Um, <laughs> DIX, by the way, I'm not turning this thing blue. Here, here's what's interesting to me. You, you talk about ESPN plus Gabe, you and I have talked about this a lot on our Sirius XM show, uh, big 12 today, 375 is so what what is the future of like sooner vision and the longhorn network in other words does the rest of the sec which which again when you get in the sec they kind of you you your third tier rights roll into the sec network right or at least that's what we understand but you know what's not on the sec network coaches shows like they, they don't have the the live coaches shows they don't have the things that we have on sooner vision that we've done and, guys, I can't help but wonder, you know, you think about ESPN Plus, having a game, uh, having the coaches shows, all the shows that we do, the coaches corners, the, the huddle. I think other schools are going to see that and say, damn, okay, we understand our third-tier rights are in, in with this, but we want a channel on there, right? And how hard would it be to have another little link that's, okay, well, here's Tide Vision on ESPN Plus or here's Gator Vision on ESPN Plus. So, I can't help but wonder, guys, if this might be a little bit of the future in other schools seeing this. And I don't know if it's going to mean more money. I mean, everything is is under one roof in the SEC. But, you know, having a game is a big deal on ESPN+. Plus. And maybe that's another show for another time, Gabe. But I just think it's going to be very interesting to see how this whole deal works out with ESPN+. Plus and Sooner Vision. I, uh, I talked to Joe Castiglione about that a little bit. And basically the way that I understood what he said was that clearly the sec, whatever platform they'll have by the time that OU gets to the sec, that it will, that they were very, very confident that OU's content would be able to kind of the kind of just seamlessly integrate into yeah. whatever the sec is, is going to have in place at that time. I, in my in my opinion, the SEC is going to have and I can't imagine this won't happen over the next couple of years. They'll just have their own piece of ESPN Plus. You'll go to the SEC section and right. their SEC section. Yeah. Sorry, well my, my sister in law just had right. a baby. She didn't have a C section. Well, now <laughs> probably too much information at this point. I'm going back to what I was talking about. So. And congratulations to Mitch and Liza on the birth of Sterling. <laughs> congratulations, guys. Great Love name. You. But you look, at, you look at what will be in place. I think it'll be like, it, it'll be like the SEC part of ESPN Plus, and then you can select each team's coverage within that. I, I would assume. I like that. Ooh. Because I, that makes the most sense to me. And But, Plank, you are right. People may not realize, like, OU, we got way more going on than a lot of places Absolutely. when it comes to getting getting content, you know, producing content for the fan base. So I, I think you're right. And Ted, I wouldn't be surprised if some other SEC schools start paying a little more attention to what OU is doing. They're like, okay, we we need to we need to step our game up. Yeah. And 
the way I imagine it, and this could be totally wrong because I have no, I have no extra understanding of it. But my guess is like the SEC third tier rights contract probably covers certain sports. I, I think OU will still probably be able to like, cause they talked about like the gymnastic stuff and, and like even the coaches shows and, and some of that, like, I don't know what that is like sport that that's necessarily rolled into, or if it's just all encompassing, um, you know, because I, I would assume that a lot of schools don't have the infrastructure we have because they've never had control of their third tier rights. So they've never had, any interest in doing any of this stuff because they can't make any money off of it. So since Oklahoma has the setup for all of that, um, my guess is they'd probably work something out to where certain things are rolled into the package and the SEC can have that, but some of the stuff outside of that, that they like, they don't want, like they probably don't want the coaches shows and, and stuff like that. They'll probably allow you to, to have that on your own, but I could be totally wrong. They may say, absolutely not. We're rolling everything into this contract. And and then one more quick thing on this, not to completely derail the the scheduling talk, the SEC network, they put on some pretty good stuff, man. Uh, During the softball regionals, the SEC now show Dari Noka, who I think he's been on with you guys before, right? He, their show is really good. And uh, so you have better coverage. And then in what we, I say we, the three of us are all involved with Sooner Vision. You hope that it can fit perfectly. I'm I'm really excited to see how it plays out. I really am. Yeah, that would kind of suck if all the shows we do went away, guys. Yeah, no, we can't have well, that. There's no, such no. a huge appetite, and I right. don't know how it is everywhere else, but I'm sure Dari does a great show, and I'm sure they cover it really well. But, you know, OU fans want to see their team covered in depth. They don't give <laughs> two, you know what, about <laughs> Mississippi Andy. States or what, you know what I'm saying? So, and, yeah. And they want it, they want it, they want to see it be covered by their people. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. so there's still a big appetite for that, but whether it, it all exists, don't know. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the schedule. Man, I, that, that took a turn that I did not see. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Hey, this is what happens when you get three, three brilliant minds together like this. Okay. September 17th at Nebraska, 11 a.m. on Fox. This will be the first game in Lincoln since 2009. And actually had a little interaction with a Nebraska fan in the Miami airport a couple Ooh. days ago. Fists. And they, if, and I'm not saying that he is completely representative of their fan base, but didn't seem overly thrilled with the 11 a.m. kickoff. So I, I think Nebraska fans are are feeling feeling a similar feeling that OU fans have felt many, many times over the last couple of years. It's crazy. You know, I played there in 2001, and I think it was we were one and they were three or we were two and they were three. We were both in the top three. I don't, I don't remember who was where or what we were. And it was an 11 a.m. kick. Um, and as a player, it was awesome. The atmosphere was awesome. It was great. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I can, I still understand that they want that thing to be in prime time, have everyone lubed up. Like if you're Oklahoma and – like we think that's going to be a tough competitive game. If you could pick a time to kick it off, I think typically you would say 11 a.m. But honestly, guys, I feel like OU plays best in the biggest environment. So I I know you would hand pick 11 a.m. on the road. To, the crowd's not going to be as loud, but I feel like we've always answered in those type of situations to where maybe like we would play better ourselves if it was on the road at prime time, but doesn't matter now. <laughs> now and I, I was told that Nebraska fans do kind of dig the 11 a.m. start because they like the post tailgate too, but Ooh. I don't, I mean, who, who knows, especially if you win, it feels good. But again, unfair for me because I love the 11 a.m. start everywhere, but I understand the challenges for most people. I, 
I will say one more thing about that interaction I had with that Nebraska fan in the airport. He, and I, I don't know if he thought this was, this was a sick burn or what, but he was like, you know what I call OU? And I was like, what? He was like the paperclip school. Okay. And I was, I was waiting for like, okay, is this going to be witty? This could be, he's like the symbol on the helmet. It looks like a paperclip. Oh, it doesn't. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you got. And, and so of course my smart ass went, you, you know what OU fans call Nebraska now? And he was like, what? I go an easy win. <laughs> <laughs> the free space on the bingo board. Mm. Yeah. That OU doesn't look like a paper clip. What it, Visual I, evidence from Teddy on the YouTube page right now. Yeah. Great visual. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's what he said. I thought he was going to hit me with something really, really good, but hey, I got hit with paper clip school. We're doing pretty damn good. If that's all you can come up with. That's is, right. Uh, paper clip school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. OU Texas, October 8th on ABC, which is where it should be always and forever kick time to be determined. Why do they even do this to us? Why, why do they give us hope that it's, and, and first of all, I hated seeing that. We've talked about it. We love the 11 a.m. kick. Don't mess with <laughs> it. I love it. I love it for that game. Don't mess with it. But I did, I did play in one that kicked off at like, it was like one thirty or two, or it was such a random time and it was so hot and miserable. Now we won, but <laughs> it was just, it was gross, but I don't even know. Well, why are they playing with our emotions, guys? We all know it's going to be at 11 a.m. Come on. It's going to be 11 a.m. I, I know that fans hate it that are going to the game, but the problem is, is the 11 a.m. games rate like crazy because everyone in the country is up, gearing up, whether they're at a tailgate or at the bar or at their house with the, you know for a watch party for a game later that day that they've got. Those games rate like crazy, so they're going to continue to throw good stuff there, just how it is. Yeah, it's big noon kick for a reason, right? Because they have – Fox feels like it's found something. Um, I mean, look, they're putting – their number one pick, their number one pick of a game this year was Alabama-Texas, and they're putting that at 11 a.m. In what – is that the first or second week of the season in – second, thank you, Gabe – in Austin? It's going to be scorching. So it's, it's a big deal to them. And Ted, I feel like just a couple of years ago, they put one at two 30 and I think everyone was kind of excited and pumped up uh, in like the administration side of like, Hey, we got a game at two 30. And everyone's like two 30. We'll just put it at 11. If you're going to put it at two 30. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's, and, and I was on a, I was on a show the other day and someone was just flabbergasted that we never play this game in prime time. And I was like, if you play this game in prime time, Oof, you got a full day of everyone getting fired up in that setting where those people, uh, it, it, OU and Texas fans coming together. It's just, oof, I don't yeah. know if that'll ever happen, peeps. No way. And I don't, I don't even know. It's been, I can't remember, but I would feel like a 2.30, like 11 a.m., it sucks getting up that early for people that were out partying the night before. But I feel like you dodge all of the, the, uh, fair traffic, right? Yes. Two thirty game. Like people that are just going there for the fair also are all showing up at the same time. It's gotta be a nightmare. Right. And, and it's funny because listen, I'm much older than you guys, but like 30 year old Chris Plank, 25 year old Chris Plank hated the 11 AM kicks 47 year old. It's like, yeah, all right, let's go. 11 AM <laughs> there. There you go. You think, cause Ted, we might, we might go grab dinner and watch a game, Gabe, or something, but we're in bed in plenty of time before kickoff of that 11 a.m. game now. Yeah, so OU Texas kickoff time still to be determined, but I would be stunned, stunned if it's not at 11 a.m. Okay, probably the most significant announcement, right, from last week was that the OU Iowa State game in Ames – that was originally scheduled for Thursday, October 27th has been moved to Saturday, October 29th. Now that game is going to be on Fox or FS one, the kick time still to be determined, but 
I, I, I don't want to say that, that I think this is a disadvantage to OU. I, that's not right. The way is right way to say it. Right. You, I mean, college football is played on Saturdays, so I, I I'm not, but I, I will say I did like how that Thursday game originally lined up for OU because remember, totally agree. That trip to Ames was after a bye, and then you had the Thursday night game, and that that was the week before you played Baylor on the following Saturday. So I it, it kind of Ted, this is the way I think of it. It, it kind of reminds me of you know, the bye week in the NFL, right? You, you kind of want it in the middle of your season, like that weird Thursday night game. I'd rather it be, be equidistant between two games yeah. as opposed to, and I know that that maybe is not exactly the best way to put it, but I like how it split up that between the bye and the Baylor trip. But once again, I mean, it's, you're, you're playing a college football game on a Saturday. It's not that big of a deal, but, I won't lie. I did like how the original schedule of that game being on a Thursday night, I, I like how that laid out for OU. But once again, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I think the Thursday night atmospheres are usually really wild and, and uh, a good time, especially Iowa State, man. Iowa State's got a good home crowd. Um, I thought that – hell, like, hell of a DJ. <laughs> Hell of a DJ, the loud, one of the best sound systems in college football, but they're into techno, which is weird, but I, the timing was great. <laughs> After a bye week, you get a couple of extra days rest for the guys. If, if you get any bumps and bruises in the Iowa state game and a couple of extra days for the coaches to game plan and, and just figure out exactly what you, cause I think Baylor's going to be the toughest game that you've got all year. So I thought it worked out perfectly. Uh, now, the biggest disappointment was selfishly, it was going to be two weekends off in a row, right? You know, for us, which is, you know, I, huge. I'm glad you said it I, <laughs> because the thing, the thing was, and we, we all look at, we all look at the world through, you know, our lens, right? Right. And I was looking at it going, wait, wait, wait. I would have two Friday and Saturdays off in a row crazy right oh it would have been incredible. amazing when i saw this schedule change dude i was heartbroken I <laughs> I was know. Like, and, and i, know I thought you guys better. would be excited i thought no, you'd be pumped it, about it plank we're selfish it's all about <laughs> us man no but yes. i understand it's way better for ou fans right that are trying to make that road trip which there'll, there'll be a bet much bigger presence i assume uh, of people in crimson and cream but yeah as far as how it affects our lives. Don't love it. Yeah. My question is what precipitated the change? Like why, why did they change it? Was this a, because I'm guessing since it was scheduled there, this was already a selected game by one of the networks. All right, is there a change in, in mind? Do they think Iowa state's going to be better or worse or, is there something else going on that Thursday that we don't know about? It, it seemed really strange that they changed it. I have not got an answer on that, and I've been bugging people. I looked at the schedule. There's no other games on that Thursday night. Someone had theorized that, uh, like, Tampa Bay was playing. I'm like, listen, they don't look at the NFL schedule. The college, they, they don't. They don't care tell, about it. Tell that to the Sugar Bowl plank. Right, that's a good point. Well, here's that's the really thing. If that's the case <laughs> – and you've got a big NFL game on Thursday night, I guarantee you your game would rate better. You've already got a captive audience. And people yep. are going to flip around. Like when there's football fans sitting there watching an NFL game and there's something else happening, another uh, you know, That's decent point. college football game, people are going to watch that as well. I mean, good point. rarely, unless it's like your team, if we're talking about the general football fans out there, Rarely are you just going to stay totally locked in on one game if there's two good games going on. I, I, I will accept the date change, but I don't love it. I'm just going to say, I don't love it. I don't love it. Okay, well, note your we, protest. It, <laughs> this is our official protest to move it back to Thursday so that we can get two free weekends in a row. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, we're the worst. Okay. We're, we're going to do something that we have never done in the history of this podcast. One of the guests is going to read an ad read. It is never because, happened. And that's because I love this place. Loves travel stops. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to do the butt first thing. Oh, and that's right. I'm sorry. I screwed it up. Go ahead, Gabe. My bad. No, no, no. I want, is you, it me? You are the guest. You will oh. do. So be to say something like, we're going to talk a little OU well, golf. Hold on. And then this would be the most professional way to do it. We got softball coming up. We got baseball coming up. Golf today. But first, <laughs> loves travel stops. Let me tell you people something. When you road trip, there's only one place to stop, and that's loves travel stops. Look, I downloaded the handy dandy app. I'd never done it before. Why? Well, because I had a crappy old phone and didn't have the storage. It's incredible to download the app. And there's over 600 locations in 41 states offering 24 access, uh, 24 hour access to clean and safe places. Like when we're going to Dallas, I got my stops on 35. There's the loves travel stops. That's right before you get to Denton, right? Right in that Denton area. It's got a Godfather's pizza in it. You got the one that's on the other side of the road. If you want to stop, you're going the other way. Loves travel stops, fresh fruit, all the snacks you want. And my personal favorite, not just Gabe's, Java Amori with the peach rings. You got to get the coffee with the peach rings. That's extra energy, extra juice. Now, Ted likes the sour gummies, but the peach rings, you can never go wrong. They've expanded their mobile to go zone, and you can grab any of that stuff there including their hot dogs. Make sure you download that Loves Connect app that I was just talking about. The Loves Connect app also includes a route planner and store locator. When you see that red heart on the highway, stop in and say hi at Loves Travel Stops. For a full list of what Loves has to offer, visit loves.com. Loves Travel Stop, the heart of the highway. It was good, but you didn't sing the Java Amore like Gabe does. That's right. That's right. I got it. I got it. <laughs> There's some of the stuff in here that's trademarked. And I and yeah. listen, I can't afford to have to get trademarked by Gabe on that. Oh, good. Singing his Java Amore. That's for oh, certain. Oh, Tremendous. Good. Opolis Clothing is the exclusive home for all of our Oklahoma breakdown merchandise. If you want to live your life in buttery soft comfort, go to opolisclothing.com. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use our promo code TED, T-E-D, for 10% off your entire order. You still get a discount on all the OU and OKC Thunder gear as well. That's opolisclothing.com. Use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. And make sure you send your kids to Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School has a long tradition of educational excellence, with a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio, no student is overlooked. Bishop McGinnis's college prep curriculum offers 22 AP courses. There are numerous clubs and organizations for students to join. And as a proud member of the OSSAA, there are 14 sports offered. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Remember, financial aid is available. Plank, let's talk some OU golf. Ah, did you watch today? Are you I, all in? I, I, I caught every, I was traveling, but I caught everything I could off Twitter. And just, uh, by the way, OU golf's Twitter was doing way better than the golf channel at showing the suspenseful matchups. But losing the national quarterfinals to Arizona State out at Greyhawk in Scottsdale. Now, remember, uh, this, this is a team under Coach Hibble that – they they were the Big Twelve champions, and then you know you get you get to the NCAA championships and just come up a little short. the The Sun Devils got him, Ted. Yeah, and it was crazy, you know, a back and forth match, and comes down to the last hole, and who was it? Just drains a a big time par putt to win the hole and send it to an extended playoff. And man, on the next hole, just both guys played it outstanding. And the kid from ASU drains it was about a 12, 14 footer yep. and just toilet bowls into the hole to make birdie. And uh, we had a good, good look at it from probably seven, eight feet. Uh, just couldn't get it to drop. No margin for error. Give it up to Arizona State, man. Um, they played really, really well. It's tough, but man, with, with losing as many guys as they did last year, 
and being able to bounce right back and do what they did this year, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be right back at it next year with the chance to win it all again. Stephen Campbell Jr. That's, I mean, that was a nails putt that he made. And wait, I, I'm, I know Patrick Welch, it, it threw me off because he, he hits cross-handed. I've never seen it before in my life. He has his right hand on top. and his, So I've got to go to the Have course. Have you ever tried it? I'm going to try it whenever I go tomorrow. Be careful. It, you almost <laughs> dislocate your shoulder whenever you say. try it. It's the weirdest thing ever. You know, it was it was a, a, a rough day for the star, Chris Goddard. I mean, he got smoked, and you know that's got to suck for him. But, Ted, you, you hit it on the head, man. You, you guys, I know you had Eddie on to talk golf. Ryan Hibble is, is one of those dudes that when you talk to him, even if you haven't talked to him for a while – it's like you've never skipped the beat. He's he is one of the best dudes, one of the best coaches. They're going to be back six straight year to make match play. Um, they've recruited some of the top guys in the country. Never been Trans- done, right? Isn't that never right? Been done. Yeah. Transfer portal's a big deal in golf too. They'll Chris Goddard came in for Rutgers, so they're going to be good, man. But I'm telling you what, that putt by Stephen Campbell Jr. to force that extra playoff hole was as nails as they come. They're going to. I mean, it's going to hurt because they had opportunities to win that. Um, but it was what a weekend and they were the, they were one of the best teams in the country all season long. It was fun to follow. Yeah. And I I was just thinking as I was watching Campbell in that moment, I was like, Oh my God, I I (laughs) tried to hit a golf ball with that amount of pressure on me. Oh my God. It was, it was a horrifying thought. (laughs) It was just, (laughs) it made me, it was giving me anxiety. And I was like, what? It's not like I was doing it, but I was watching it just, I was, but it, it did all season long, right? Team that was you know, widely considered to be the best in the country. For them to not even make the semis, I know it It probably hurts, but it is, it, it's not, it's not always, and this is something you kind of learn as you get older. Like, it's not always about winning the championship. Now that's a huge piece of it, right? And that's the goal, but hopefully these guys are able to look at, you know, look back on this season and, you know, think about the journey to that point and, and not beat themselves up too much, especially a guy like Goddard up, right? Right. Has a, you know, misses a couple putts. He was, he was there in contention, right? For the, for the individual national championship. And it, it, it kind of went awry there late for him. And like you said, Plank didn't play particularly well, but, the guy won the Fred Haskins award, <laughs> like he, which my understanding is basically the Heisman of, you know, men's college golf. So it is, it, it, it's always tough when you fall short of the goal, but still uh, a hell of a season for coach Hibble and those guys. And, and like y'all both said that, that program ain't going nowhere. You yeah. know what pissed me off watching that tournament? The commercials? <laughs> no. All of, all of them. The flags, there was not a breath of wind. Nothing. Not a ripple on the water. Not a little jiggle to the flag the, at all. I'm so sick of the damn wind here in Oklahoma <laughs> right now. It, it's been, it like, it's not today. just me, right? It's right, been no, horrible. It was- it was terrible today, and it's supposed to be even worse tomorrow. So remember, April was like the windiest April fifty years. Ever. It's been worse. It's been yeah. worse. It's been worse. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And it's a beautiful. It was a beautiful day for them to. It was I, great. I that course that, was awesome. Isn't that one of Arizona State's home courses too? I believe they play there quite a bit. So you had that as a disadvantage too for Oklahoma. But hell of a season, man! Can't wait to see what they're going to do next year. Yeah. All right. Let's talk a little OU baseball plank and okay this is something i've wondered right because t row clearly the voice of ou baseball you are the voice of ou softball do you because you love diamond sports sure like it is it, it is right in the wheelhouse for you like do you stay really on top of ou baseball stuff yeah so when we're on the road it, it was so a couple of years ago i know this is going back a bit but one of the girls dated one of the baseball guys 
So when the game, when the softball game was over, as soon as we get back to the hotel or even on the bus back, boom, the game's pulled up. Everyone's watching it. So we've gone a couple of years without that connection between baseball and softball for some reason. And listen, I, I just want someone to watch the baseball game with me. <laughs> I don't need to get into the semantics of it, but I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I, li- I use that varsity app, that ref app like crazy because I'm always listening to Toby. Um, I'm not one of those people that gives up on, on a team just because they struggle. Now, when a game's 15 zip in the sixth, I might find something else to watch. But, yeah, no, no, dude, long answer to a short question. I love following OU baseball because that's where I got my start. My, in 2011, when I started doing sidelines, I was Toby's filling on baseball while he did basketball. So I traveled with baseball in 11, well, I guess it would be 12, 12, 13, 14, and 15. My first year with softball wasn't until 16. So I got to see some pretty good players back in those days. So it's always been near and dear to my heart. So with them going and winning the Big 12 tournament title, right, great pitching from Jake Bennett, David Sandland, who I believe is the Sandman from what I've gathered, which is just what an incredible nickname. Cade Horton. Also really good performance there in the Big 12 tournament. How mad should I be that they're not hosting a regional? Because I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't stay on top of the college baseball RPI and all that stuff. Like how, how upset should I be that they're not hosting a Norman? Pretty mad. Damn Pretty it. Pretty mad. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, ridiculous. <laughs> and, and I, I'll tell you what it, We'll go real in depth on this, and because I get to hang out for winners and losers today. But the NCAA, or or whom I don't know, the NCAA gets blamed for everything. But I'm sure there's a committee and offshoot somewhere. They're out announcing host sites in the like eighth inning of the Big Twelve championship game, and like, what 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 are we doing? As, and and I honestly had completely forgot about this. I'm all in watching baseball. And all of a sudden, my feed says, congratulations to Blacksburg hosting a regional. Like, why is this being announced now? Because the Pac-12 tournament, its championship game, hadn't even started yet. So it's pretty dumb. But listen, they're, they've had a bit of a chip on their shoulder for a while. And I think, it's, I think it's pretty – I think it's a good little feel for them. And I think they landed in a pretty good spot. Now, re- I want to – real quick on David Sandlin, do you know any of his story? I, I read about it in the Oklahoman. Okay. Oh, my yeah, gosh. His sister Terrible. just passed away. She had been battling cancer for a long time. He's an Owasso kid. He's an Oklahoma guy. Uh, he transferred in. His dream was always to play for Oklahoma. I am, dude, I am one of his biggest fans. Just to be able, and his whole family was down there to be a part of it with him. And I know she had had a hard fought, uh, fought battle. So, you know, you think of, of that kid going through that. Uh, you know, I think a lot about, you know, people behind the scenes like Ryan Gaines, the director of operations, who I know listens to this podcast. Uh, he battled some health issues earlier this year, and he was away for the team for a while. So you get someone like that back, and you see the battles they've gone through. They're a, they're a really fun and easy team to root for. And I think they're going to go down to the Gainesville Regional, and I think they're going to win it. Um, but that's a, that's a tough regional, man. Central Michigan is good. Uh, Liberty is good. And get this, Ted, OU and Florida have never played each other in baseball. Wild, huh. right? Yeah, wow. never played each other in baseball. So that'll be uh, hopefully the matchup in the regional finals coming up this uh, this weekend. Yeah, they're going to go down there. They're going to win the thing. So here's my – you want to hear my conspiracy theory on the oh. NCAA? Oh, I'm hell in. yeah. So they did this in basketball also. They started announcing – Uh, draws and stuff before tournaments were even done. And they've done this a couple of different times. My theory is since there's no benefit from it, they could have waited, um, you know, let the conference tournaments clear, clear out before you start announcing who's hosting, just to give at least a little bit of, um, people feel like you're taking these games into account as you should be taking them into account. My theory is they preempt them and start naming it. It steals the power away from the conference tournaments. It, it, it robs it of, of being as influential and as big as it should be. And I, I get my only 
the only reason I think they would do that is because there's always like this fear of them, like of, of conferences going at it alone and stuff and, and taking the NCAA out. And this is their opportunity to like preempt that and make them not as powerful. That's the only thing I can think of, of why they do something stupid, like huh. announcing regional host before everything is said and done. So, but I'm with you. I think that this is ultimately better for the baseball team as far as winning games. When you accomplish something that hasn't been done in a long time, what, a decade since they've won this many conference games and performed this well or had a a chance to host a regional, like if you host a regional, everyone's going to be patting you on the back and telling you what a great job you've done. And it's like, we're playing with house money at this point. We've earned it. Everything else is just, you know, money in the bank. And that's not the attitude that they need to be rolling in with. They need to be rolling in. Like Plank said, they got a chip on their shoulder. They've been playing angry. I think this just fuels the fire. And when you got a hot team, you do whatever you can to keep that fire rolling. I think after I had time to cool off and, you know, just realize that it doesn't matter what the NCAA is always going to do stupid stuff. It's just going to be how they roll. Um, I'm actually now, even though it would have been cool, I'm, I think this is better for the team. I, I tend to agree with, with my limited OU baseball knowledge. (laughs) I, I think if you ask Skip Johnson, would you, would you rather have hosted a regional or would you rather have your team who from what I understand is one of the hottest teams in the country now have the extra motivation of not hosting a regional. He'd probably tell you he wanted to host the regional, honestly, but <laughs> there, there is, there, there's part of him that's going excellent. Yes. Let, well, let, let the rage it, it, fuel you. It depends when you ask the question. I, uh, if you ask the question now, he'd rather host it. If they go down there and win the regional in, in Florida, he'd probably say, who cares? Right. Hey, right. If they and, lose down there, You'd yeah, probably say, we got screwed. We should have been hosting this thing. And, and look at the Women's College World Series right now, which I know we're getting to softball coming up in just a bit. But there's only three of the eight teams that were hosts. Three of the eight team that were hosts in Super Regionals. So, you know, there is there is a chance that if they can make a move, they're, or if they can get a win down in Gainesville, boys, they can make some moves, man. They're really pitching it well right now. It's time. It is time to preview the Women's College World Series. But first, (laughs) it's time to get back out on the golf course, people. And there's nothing better to drink on the course than the number one seltzer in golf, Clubby Seltzers. Clubby Seltzers is an Oklahoma company that is already winning national awards because their product is delicious. Tastes exactly like a club special, but it's a seltzer. They're not just for the course either. They're perfect to drink by the pool, after mowing the lawn, whatever. If you haven't tried Clubby Seltzers yet, go grab some. You won't regret it. Clubby's variety pack is out. To find a place near you that has Clubby's, visit clubbyseltzers.com. Attention, business owners. You need Insurica in your life? Yeah, you do. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, in the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Insurica's clients become best-in-class businesses by working with Insurica's team of advisors to manage risk. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business. Best-in-class businesses win by avoiding a loss in the first place. If your business partners with Insurica, You'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. I'm an Insurica client, and you should be too. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A dot com. All right, Plank. First of all, what what's this season? What's it been like being the play-by-play voice for OU softball? Awesome. Um, may, maybe one of the most enjoyable seasons we've ever had just as far as the regular season is concerned. 
Um, you know, I mean, come on, got to go to Hawaii, Los Angeles, <laughs> just the trip, Palm Springs, the trip itself has been worth it. But and everything that's happened, you know, you had a, a, a record break that many thought would never be broken. You it happened in Jocelyn's hometown. You had this freshman that's got the confidence and swagger of a Connor McGregor out there stalking the circle and winning. For, I mean, as, as we taped this, we just found out that Jossie's a two time national player of the year and Jordy makes it back to back years and Oklahoma has the freshman of the year on their squad. And by the way, speaking of, of numbers, they get it next year too. Yeah. Th- with the uh, freshman, the, the, the pitcher deal that's coming in from, I, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know where she's coming in from, but she's the number one recruit in the country and the number one pitcher in the country. Um, they're, they're loaded, man. And they're just, when you're around a team that's, that's good and knows they're good and is cocky and arrogant about it, it, it can suck, but they, they're good. They know they're good. And they're just, they're, they're 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 good kids i guess i can say that because they're my kids age um but they're just they're a really fun group to be around gabe and patty makes it fun um she's you know obviously the best at what she's doing right now the excitement over love's field has added another level to it thanks to you know the entire love's family tom and judy what they've done have been incredible and yes i can refer to him by first name (laughs) but it's just it's it's so big time what's going on with this program right now. And they're just a bunch of women that are out there having a blast and kind of changing the game. And it's just been, it's really fun to see there's been pitfalls, there's been some drama, but it seems in, in through it all, they just have, and the phrase is, is thrown around a lot. They have this championship mindset where they know their ultimate goal is, is an, is on the field is a national championship. And, Boy, they are they are rolling towards it right now. It, it, it's just been I, – I can't even describe it. For a sport that if you, you went back to 2012 and said, hey, Plank, 10 years from now, you're going to be talking about softball like it's one of your kids just getting born, um, I, I, I would tell you you're crazy. But that's how I feel about it. It's just – it's an incredible sport, and this team makes it that way. Now, I don't mean this in, in oh, a no. bad way. Oh, no. But – you cut you at the end of the season. You had the Big Twelve tourney lost to Oklahoma State. That's right. You had your ace pitcher all of a sudden out with injury. Yeah, how about Patty breaking that on your show? Huh? Let's go. Yeah, Oklahoma yeah. breakdown newsbreaker. Um, and I I don't mean to say that they were asleep because they just put together one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen in softball. Right. But is it fair to say like kind of all of that happening was a bit of a wake up call in a sense, because it looks like, yeah. And, and maybe it's just that they've played different teams and, and they're in the postseason. I don't know, but this team looks energized. They look hungry. They look like they're on a mission again, kind of like what, what we saw early in the season and, you know, seasons will have their, their peaks and valleys throughout, but I don't know. They're awake and they're playing some of their best ball of the entire year, right? Right at this moment. So the Texas loss, I think, woke them up because they beat them back to back games. I think Run ruled them in one of them, too. I mean, beat the snot out of them. And the Texas, and this was a lesson they didn't learn against Baylor, right? Where you beat them twice and then a pitcher adjusts and they didn't adjust and should have lost that Baylor third game, right? They, there was a dropped ball in foul territory that would have been the third out, and then they come back and win. Um, Haley Delcini came out on that Saturday. It was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series and just threw a gym, and I think they learned about adjusting. And, I mean, I, Gabe, you and I have talked to Kenny Gajewski a lot on our uh, Sirius XM show, and he's done a great job at Oklahoma State. And so when I say this, it's no disrespect. Um, just like I think if, if they don't, if Oklahoma State doesn't have an injury, I don't know if they lose a game uh, outside of Oklahoma the rest of their season. They probably don't lose to Iowa State if she's 100% healthy. But if Oklahoma has Jordy Ball, I don't know if they lose in the Big 12 tournament because, bro, that affected that team. Mm-hmm. I mean, whenever it was understood that she wasn't going to pitch, it wasn't like, all right, let's go next man up. It was, oof, I think there was some. There were some heads that were hanging. I think there was a little bit of frustration, and understandably so. 
she had been the best pitcher in college softball. And I think that team had a bit of a hangover from that in, in the Big 12 title game. Now, I, I want to make this very clear because there's a lot of Oklahoma State fans. That's no disrespect. Listen, they won, the, they won the Big 12 tournament. They're in the freaking College World Series right now, okay? But I'm just telling you, this team suffered, I think, from a bit of a of kind of hanging their heads a little bit when she got hurt. Because you look back at the Iowa State and that Oklahoma State game, they didn't play well. And they, I mean, I know Hope Troutwine had like 15 strikeouts against Iowa State, but they didn't play well in that game. And so then you fast forward to the regional, the realization that, hey, all right, we're pretty good. Listen, let's get, Ted, I think you're onto something. Because since that lost Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game, they've realized we got to, we got to focus on us. We can't worry about injuries. We can't worry about who's coming back and when they're coming back or what people are saying about us. We got to focus on us. And they went out and they, gosh, what was it? 14 zip had a three to two game, then a 20 to zero game. And then UCF's a really good team and they beat them 15 to one in two games combined. And that's a Gave up really three hits, right? In three the hits. whole series. It did. And, and their only run came on a home run in the sixth inning in, in, in the last game. So, yeah, I love that take. I think so, it's a great take. Y- you mentioned that Super Regional, right? Is, I, I mean, did we learn much? Because uh, I don't want to make it sound like it would have been better if they would have played some close games there. But, uh, and I guess when you're beating the hell out of teams, you can only, you can only <laughs> complain so much. But it's, there's these, there's these moments where, and we talked to Patty about it, where they just don't have, they have not had many pressure situations throughout the season for the pitchers or the hitters. Right. And I just, and maybe they won't have any in the women's college world series, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I I watched the super regional. I'm like, did, did we learn anything? (laughs) It's like, it's two blowout, blowout wins. Let let me tell you two things that, that you learned that matter. Number one is Hope Troutwine has now been in these big moments and knows how to handle them. She threw a no-hitter on Friday. No, no one's even really talking about it. She no-no, a UCF team. Now, granted, she had four walks, but she threw a no-no. Um, she hadn't been in these situations at North Texas. And I talked to her after the game. She goes, it's cool because I remember sitting and watching these whenever I was a freshman, sophomore, junior, and playing these moments. And she hadn't played in front of – crowds like that or in the postseason I think it I think it was a great thing for her so to me that's one thing you learn the second is that Nicole May is ready and she's been battling a couple of dings this year and to see the way that she threw on Sunday or Saturday excuse me that fired me up I think you know the Jada Coleman's your leadoff hitter period I mean she's just I mean she nearly started a brawl in that game (laughs) But in, in, in the sixth inning after a walk, I mean, that's just how fiery, maybe it was the fifth. That's how fiery she is. And it's just, there's things you can take away even in the blowout. And, and one of those is they've got their leadoff situation figured out, not that it was ever a problem. And you've got confidence now that the whole team does that if for some reason Jordy can't go, you know what you've got in Hope Trout, Wine, and Nicole May, and you're going to be okay. Well, here we are. Uh, we're in the World Series, and uh, I th- I feel like the field is a little down. And maybe this is just a ignorant football player's take, but it feels like the the field is a little down. And I honestly believe this looks like a collision course for the Oklahoma schools to be in the finals against one another. Am I missing yeah. something? No, you're not. He, here's the only thing that can stop that. Um, <laughs> if we and, can get past Northwestern. <laughs> well, and by the way, Gabe, <laughs> Teddy Lehman, underrated, good softball take guy. I'm just saying <laughs> right now. I, I, I'm Every so often, Ted, what you correct me on earlier this year? He cr- run rules. You corrected Tennessee, me on run rules. Something to do with the Tennessee game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was one of the three teams that hadn't run ruled them. Yeah, because I was like, isn't it two? And Ted's texting me to crack me. I'm like, look at Teddy Lehman, softball guy. <laughs> um, you have three teams that come in unranked. I told you guys earlier, only three teams that hosted their regional are currently playing. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State and UCLA. That's unheard of. That doesn't happen in this sport, okay? Um, o- Oklahoma is the one seed. 
has the hell bracket. I mean, let's just face it, because you got to deal with Danielle Williams and Northwestern, whom, by the way, they played in the Super Regional in 2019. In Sid Romero's senior season, that's who they beat to go to the Women's College World Series. And, oh, by the way, Danielle Williams pitched in that series. She threw 400 pitches in the three games in the Super Regional this week in like 25 innings. It's incredible. So you got a, a really good pitcher in Northwestern and in the, in the Wildcats coming in. And their pitching coach, Michelle Gascoigne, pitched at Oklahoma. So she knows Coach Gasso's mindset, mansion, all that stuff. Then on the top side of it, you got a team that's beat you in Texas and a team that might be among the most talented in softball in UCLA. Meanwhile, on the bottom part of the bracket, Ted, I mean, Oklahoma State to me is hands down the best team in this black bracket. And it's not even close. Arizona was 0-9 at one point in conference play. They might be the hottest team in the tournament right now. Oregon State, I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm calling the Oregon State game on Thursday night. I, I, I just starting my homework. I don't know how they're here. It's one of those where like they were, they got smoked by Tennessee in the first game of the Knoxville Regional when they played each other. And then the next thing you know, you look up and they're in the Super Regionals. And then they're in the World Series. It just, it doesn't make any sense how they're here. Florida's pretty good, but even they had to go on the road to get here. So, yeah, I, I feel like we're on a collision course for OU and OSU in the Women's College World Series Championship Series. But, man, where things happen, a pitcher gets hot. You know, Florida doesn't necessarily have a dominant ace, but they got a lot of really good arms. You know, if, if listen, I'm not – I don't want Oklahoma taking that scenic route again, but a lot like what happened to him last year with uh, Odyssey Alexander, you know, now you're dealing with – Danielle Williams, if she gets hot, it could be a problem. So, I mean, UCLA, like I said, they're loaded. Haley Docini, I mean, te Texas got smoked in their first game against Arkansas and won two games. So it is as unpredictable as we've had outside of, hey, Oklahoma is the best team. But any anything can happen here. I mean, that's just – that's kind of been the mantra so far of this postseason. And as easy as it seems to say Oklahoma is going to play Oklahoma State – I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Oklahoma, Florida, for goodness sakes, in the championship series come Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week either. Looking at looking at all the teams, and, and maybe the maybe the answer to both of these questions is not the same team, but you mentioned, you know, the biggest threat to Oklahoma versus like the the hottest team coming in, right. other than OU or are is that Oklahoma State or do, do you think there there's a team maybe that's a little hotter than Oklahoma state that could be a bigger threat to OU in this tournament? Or do you, do you think it it's the cowgirls? I think you're getting the matchup of the they biggest still go threat. by cowgirls, right? Cowgirls, not, I correct. Okay, you're right. Yeah. You're right. To, to me, didn't want to get canceled. If I were to <laughs> good, good point. Um, if I were to kind of give each matchup, like a little, I guess you could say, synopsis. I would say the OSU-Arizona matchup is the biggest threat versus the hottest team. So the biggest threat is Oklahoma State, with Kelly Maxwell and Morgan Day and what they've done. The, the hottest team is Arizona, who is in Caitlin Lowe, and they've just they've come out of nowhere, dude. I mean, it's legitimately – I was trying to think of a good comparison, and, and for some reason I keep coming back to like when the Giants went to the Super Bowl – uh, and they're a wild card team. And all of a sudden you look up and you're like, they're going to the soup. They're going to the Super Bowl. It, it just came out of nowhere. And I, I Arizona's a good team. Like they've got good players. So you've got Oklahoma State versus Arizona in the hottest versus the biggest threat. And that's that's going to be a really, really fun match. That's that late game on Thursday night. And if the rain stays away, we'll actually get it on. Uh, in time instead of the 1 a.m. first pitch that we had a, last year for Oklahoma State and Florida State. But, yeah, that's there. there's your hottest team versus the biggest threat. Arizona's on fire. I have no idea how they got here. The, the two Pac-12, well, two of the three Pac-12 teams are a great example of that. Have no idea how Oregon State's here. Cannot figure out what Arizona did to get out of Missouri and then to find themselves getting out of, um, getting out of uh, Mississippi State like they did this week. And it's just wild, absolutely wild. Okay, the big question everyone keeps asking, what is the latest on Jordy Ball? How, how's the progression? I mean, we heard Coach Gasso say last week she's thrown some bullpen sessions. What, what do you expect? So, 
um, while we've been doing this, because for some reason I cannot stay off my phone tonight. I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm looking at all the pictures and like, I see this one of Jordy ball. I don't know how well it's going across. I'm like, Ooh, her right arm is up. So it's good. It's around the shoulder of this other person. I'm like, I'll watch it. I'm like, Ooh, her, her right arms holding the crystal trophy for freshman of the year. Um, here, here's what I know and what I think about Jordy. There was no way she was ever going to pitch the big 12 tournament because that's, she got hurt in the Bedlam series that week before. So that was out. There was a very, very small chance she could throw in the regionals that was wiped out right away before the super regionals. She started to throw a little bit and started doing so to where she wanted to go a little bit harder than the tra- athletic trainers and the doctors wanted her to. So to me, I mean, Ted, you know what kind of workout warrior she is. She's a freak. Um, and I mean, that, I mean, she is just an athletic freak. And so they had a calm down, slow down. We got a plan here for you. And the plan I think all along had been, if we can get to the World Series, she could be ready to go. Now, there is a massive amount of pain tolerance that she has to deal with with this injury. And I think Coach talked about that on your show a couple weeks ago. And I don't know what that feels like, you know, what that torque, what that spin, what that velocity looks like right now. But I, if she can go, it's not, it's not one of those situations where I know some people are like, well, then maybe they bring her in relief to, to – no, no, no. If she can go, she goes. Right. I mean, and that's not a knock on Nicole May or Hope Troutwine at all, but she is the best pitcher in college softball. And if you have her able and ready and willing, she's going to go. But again, they want to be careful, right? This is, this is still someone who's just a true freshman. And you've won five straight games in the postseason, five straight period, with, uh, period without her being available. So um, to have her swagger back in the dugout, to have her attitude back is big. But, Ted, I would put it – because we're all about percentages when reporting on big stories in Oklahoma, right? I would say that there's a 70% chance right now that she's pitching in the, in the Women's College World Series come, come Thursday night. I really think that. Plank, I'm going to make you make a prediction here. If, if you had to pick one player that will be the MVP of the Women's College World Series – who you pick? Grace Lyons. Grace Lyons. 20 home runs this year. Um, you know, they got, they've got gold gloves this year in softball. And probably by the time that this drops, the gold glove winners will be announced. But I don't know, Ted, if your response was disappointment or no, if I should have gone I was, with Alo. I was locked and loaded with Grace Lyons, and I was going to tell you you were wrong if you were going to say anyone else. <laughs> Dude. We're, we're locked in. Okay. That's, 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 Teddy, that's Teddy softball, man. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. Um, she's hey. really played well, Ted, uh, Gabe. She's been on fire this year, and I think it continues. I'll, I'll go solo on Jordy Ball Island then. Dude, uh, if, if Jordy Ball goes – and yeah, my favorite Jordy Ball moment from the season this year, we went to Lexington. We went to Kentucky. Bro, I don't know if we had played, trying to think off the top of my head, an early season SEC road game. We went to Georgia last year, but there was still some limited capacity. We were on the road in a hostile environment, dude. They were out for blood. The line was down the street. She comes out in the bottom of the first inning, loads the bases, commits two errors, walks a batter, bases loaded gets out of it i mean i think i think she struck out the side she may have struck out too and just her little confident walk that she has off the field like okay let's go because if she goes out and she does anything similar to that gabe it's going to capture the attention of everyone and it becomes a bigger story because hey she's overcoming the injury to her arm and she's battled through everything it's not a bad pick at all it's not a bad pick at all and how about for, for a non-Oklahoma uh, player? Yeah, no? I picked the best pitcher in college <laughs> softball. I feel pretty good about it, guys. Thanks. Um, Smart pick. I'll, I'll, I'll go bottom of the bracket. I'll, I'll, say, um, I'll say a Kelly Maxwell because if Oklahoma State's going to make a run, she's got to be good. She's got to be great. She's got to be elite. So if you're asking me to go with the non-OU person, I'll stick in the state and go with Maxwell. But for Oklahoma, man, the way Grace Lyons is playing, she is a vacuum at shortstop. 
And she's coming back next year. So you got another year at Grace Lines at shortstop, which is going to be fun. You guys ready for some birthday shout outs? You in on this plank? I'm in. Let's go. I got the list. Okay. Happy third birthday to Alexander Faulkner. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Happy sixth birthday to Nikias Kai Kai Hamilton. Great. Dude, nickname. I think you nailed that. You nailed that. <laughs> Kai Kai. Happy birthday. Happy 23rd to Cole Robbins, who probably got the biggest dud shout out because he got his birthday right on the Oklahoma breakdown. It's by Plank, and it's not by Teddy and Gabe. Sorry, Cole. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy 26th birthday to Blake Lemons. Happy 40th birthday to Lindsey Perez. It's the 42nd birthday for Brian with the Y Marshall. Happy birthday to Cynthia Barnes. Congratulations to Ethan and Sarah Winter on the birth of Ivy Elizabeth Winter. Ooh, great name. Happy birthday to Joel Prail. No, no age given on this one, though. Huh. I, I'm going with Joel, not Joel. Joel. It's not Joel and B. It's Joe, Joel, Joel. It, Prail, P-R-A-L-L-E. Prail? Prail? Prail. 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 Prowl. Prowl. Ooh, prowl. Uh, prowl? <laughs> Works prowl. for me. We we hit it with one of those. <laughs> Happy fourth wedding anniversary. This is so stupid sometimes. I'm so sorry. Happy fourth wedding anniversary to Philip and Maggie Caps. Happy 25th wedding anniversary to Rick and Leslie Staggs. As always, Plank, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? I went with the Big 12 as my winner of the week Ah. now um it has not been a long time that the big 12 has spent in the winner's circle unfortunately with the loss of ou in texas but in diamond sports that hell of a season you had you have seven teams that play softball in the big 12 which seems crazy but that's it seven three of them made the postseason all three of them are going to the women's college world series big time Um, And if you want to add like a UCF, they made it to the super regional since they're going to be here. And in diamond sports, I mean, come on, you've got two schools that are hosting uh, three schools that are hosting. Excuse me. You got um, Oklahoma and Texas, uh, Texas tech have done incredible things so far this season. Hate to see that West Virginia got left out. Kansas and Baylor are making coaching changes. So big ups to the big 12 because they're winners in diamond sports this year. And who knows, they may come away with two national champions of both softball and baseball. That'd be wild. That would be, that would be awesome. That really would be, I mean, you could have, I don't know, maybe get way ahead of ourselves here, but you could definitely in softball have an all big 12 sure. uh, final and who knows in baseball. Who do you have as your Agreed. loser? Of the week. Oh, that's right. With your winner loser. Um, listen, I understand. And you're the guest, so you got to go first. You know. Sorry. Um, I understand the NCAA takes a lot of grief, and we already teed off on the baseball regionals. But how how are you not going to have gear there for a team to celebrate whenever they actually won? Uh, everyone had hats. Everyone, well, almost everyone had a ticket. More on that in a second. But when Texas beat Arkansas to advance to the Women's College World Series, no hats. No shirts, no celebration. Um, uh, everyone else had them. It's funny because it's Texas. Texas. I know. <laughs> um, th- here's the funny part of this, though, because Oklahoma didn't get its ticket. They send you this ticket that you take a picture with that you've seen. So Jake Scroggins, the equipment manager for Oklahoma, just happened to have the ticket from last year. So that picture <laughs> you see with Oklahoma holding up the, the ticket, it hadn't arrived in time for them to actually have that new. Now they got the hats here a little bit small for my big melon head, but it was, um, it was pretty wild to see Texas advance the women's college world series for the first time in a minute, but not have the proper gear to celebrate. And I'll pose this to you. If they had the hats and they had the Arkansas logo on them, wouldn't you still want them just as a point of pride to basically say like, gay, Teddy has a pair of Texas workout shorts that he got from Roy Williams because he beat him four times. Wears them with pride because he beat him. You have that Arkansas hat you wear. I, 
I have a weird story like that. <laughs> I was, and I was, I wasn't playing, but I was on the right. team, right, with the with the New Orleans Saints, and we had just lost. But I think Carolina also lost that day, so we ended up winning the NFC South because they lost too. And they like passed out the gear in the locker room after we had just lost, and we were like, "This is like, do we do we put it on?" <laughs> like what, it was a re- it was a really weird feeling. You should have <laughs> ran around like screaming, "Yeah!" Oh, I still have that hat. I still have it. I was That's like, awesome. I didn't even play this game, but this is pretty cool. It, it was the first time in my career that I was on a division winner. So awesome. it was, I was like, I am taking this hat and I'm taking this shirt and y'all are never getting it back. I don't care that we just lost. I didn't play. I love Who it. <laughs> NCAA sucks though. Just, just come prepared. Please, please. Can they can let them have their gear? They let act like it's the moment. first year they've done this stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Not the first rodeo. They they've had a lot to deal with. Okay. They have, they have. <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah, losing all they've issues been losing. they've created on their own all right <laughs> yeah no one's <laughs> no one's feeling bad for him all right ted who do you have as your winner of the week uh well first i have to give a shot uh shout out roger state d2 national champion here in oklahoma softball was awesome they uh they got the d2 national championship they beat cal state uh in what dominguez hills it was in Denver. So we got the D2 national champ right here in the state of Oklahoma in softball. It's a softball state, fellas. What, softball state. what can we say about it? Um, but I had to end up going with, how about Rafael Nadal? Unbelievable. Knocks off Djokovic in the quarterfinals. Number one Djokovic. And I believe he's won 13 straight French Open titles. And he's going for his 22nd Grand Slam unbelievable stuff the dude is timeless still getting it done on the clay court a lot of fun to watch um just an unbelievable shot maker shocked that he's still doing it at his age have have y'all ever been to one of those big tennis tournaments no have not i've never been but somehow well i know how uh i could not sleep at all whenever I played in the NFL and I ended up somehow getting into tennis because it was always on overseas <laughs> late at night, like it's four in the morning. Open. <laughs> so I started watching that stuff and I got really into tennis for a couple of years. Whenever I was in the NFL, pretty random. That's awesome. I, I would like to go, whether it's you know, the, the, the French open Wimbledon, something like, I, I think I would just like to experience I don't know. The, watching all the stuff last weekend with the Champions League, and you know, you had Formula One and Monaco and all that stuff. It's like, I I would like to to take in some more European sporting events in person. It, they just look like a blast, man. Was Coach Stoops at the uh, Formula One in Monaco? I he's in I don't Italy. know, but Kenny Stills was there, and we're going to get him on this podcast to talk about it. I think Let's Coach go. Stoops was there too. Wow. What that he was in, nice, he was in France, I know, over the weekend, and I think they went down and, and caught the Formula One at, in Monaco. Wow. Unbelievable. Very, very jealous. <laughs> All right, who do you have as your loser of the week? I had to go with Deshaun Watson. You have the HBO documentary, or I guess not necessarily a documentary, but the HBO uh, Real Sports came out, and because of that, a 23rd accuser has come out and joined the uh, the um, the civil suit that makes it now 23 against Deshaun Watson. Um, she says it was because she watched the real sports special, um, saw the contract, saw the bravery of the other women, and the quote from him where he says he didn't do anything wrong and has absolutely no regrets. She claims that's what pushed her to uh, go ahead and file. So 23, 23 charges, or I guess 23 different women have joined the lawsuit. And um, just a quick reminder, largest guaranteed contract in the history of the league has gone to Deshaun Watson, uh, and that is looming over their head uh, there at Cleveland. And by the way, 15-month now investigation, Gabe. 15 months by the NFL and nothing. Nothing. It- 
I feel like it, it's it's one of the weirdest sports stories of our lifetime. And and I know maybe the reason it doesn't get as talked about too much just because how how awkward it is to talk about and how I I mean it's I, I don't want to say it's a he he said she said thing. I, I mean there's there's 23 women accusing the guy of essentially doing the same thing to all of them, but he's he's one of the most talented quarterbacks in the NFL, and the guy just didn't play last year because he's been accused in civil court of sexual assault by all these women. Like, it's, it's one of the weirdest stories in sports in my lifetime. Yep. And, and is the NFL just going to let him play? Like, I... Well, to add to the the weirdness of it, during the tenure where he still hasn't played, he signed the biggest contract guaranteed. That's the weirdest the, part about it. In the history of the league. The, the least the least surprising part of it is that it came from the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> That's the least surprising part. Absolutely. But, but here's the thing, too. Well, go ahead, Gabe. Sorry. No, I just I mean, it's just I, I am so curious to see what the NFL does. Like, is he really going to just trot out there week one with all this going on? Like, looks like it. That's, I mean, that's just so hard for me to believe. And, and imagine being one of those women. If he just, you know, not only did he get that contract, if he just trots out there week one, I just, I don't know, man. All well, I, I, I will not be rooting for Deshaun Watson. I know that. Here's the thing. You know, a couple of different grand juries refuse to pursue charges. That doesn't mean that nothing illegal took place. Right. Exactly. It means that they don't believe there's enough evidence to convict him. Right. I think we can all agree. Like, I don't know. I wasn't there. Thank God. But. I, I don't know what the standard for pressing charges is, and I don't even, you know, know the standard for what the civil, um, you know, standard is there. I, I don't know that. But I think we can all agree that something very bad went on, right? I, I mean, well, at, at a minimum. Ted, you, you and I both know. When, when you are in – when you're in the NFL – you find your like body maintenance people, right? Yep. And, and maybe you have, maybe if you're, you know, living part-time in another city in the off season, you have one there, you've got one, you know, where you're playing the season. Uh, some guys, they've got a person that they'll fly, fly in, everywhere. Yeah. fly everywhere. Like, so you're talking two, maybe three people. I mean, this guy was <laughs> going to how I, how many different massage therapists and you got 23 of them now saying he did the same weird stuff. I, I, yep. I, I find, I, I find my guys to root for in the NFL and it's usually, you know, the OU guys or guys that I've played with guys that I know somehow, like I, I will not be rooting for Deshaun Watson ever again. <laughs> I just, I, I, I know you are innocent until you're proven guilty. I understand that, but it's it's too weird for me, man. I mean, it's just see, it's too weird for I, me. I can't. I can't remember if we talked about this on here or not. But did you see that the day after the HBO special aired, that Stefanski was asked about it, and he said, "Oh yeah, I didn't see it." How can you not see? How can you not watch that? I this is the guy you just guaranteed two hundred and fifty some million dollars to. You're not even the least bit interested. As to Unreal. what they may be saying, he oh he, uh, yeah, I didn't catch it. He he should have said, uh, "Our lawyers told me to tell you that I did not watch it." Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> that is that is what Kevin Stefanski. It's, it's unbelievable. It's one of the. It, it's so. It's such a weird story. I mean, very odd. And I, I, we'll see what happens, man. But yeah, I will. As soon as he plays, like he's going to play, and I don't know when it's going to be, but he's going to play. I hope, I hope the, the NFL media does their job 
and makes them answer as to why is it why it is okay with this all this pending and what we know about it that this is going to be a representative out there on Sunday. I think that is that is a very very important question that needs to continue to be asked throughout the 2022-2023 season. Agreed. It just it, once again, it is it is not a right to play in the NFL. Right. You do not have the right to play in the NFL. It is a privilege that you have to earn and continue to earn. And I don't know, man. I just it's that whole thing is just gross. All right. Let's finish up with my winner and loser. But first, First Fidelity Bank is a full service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs, checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all, whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone. Everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than five hundred thousand dollars to local charities and educational foundations make your life easier and go bank with first fidelity bank visit ffb.com for more information and if you are a whiskey or bourbon drinker stop what you are doing head to your favorite liquor store and buy some balconies products you got to grab some of balconies lineage single malt whiskey it was just voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by whiskey advocate and you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcones Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn, Plank. That's the fancy corn. Fancy corn. corn. <laughs> and that is why it is one more than 25 awards. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcones Pot Still Bourbon. Its big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year-round. In 2012, Balcony Single Malt won the Best in Glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen, and became the first American distillery to win that competition. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, then Balcony's products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but yes, the owners, they are from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit BalconysDistilling.com. All right, boys, for my winner of the week, I'm going Steph Curry. Mm. Golden State Warriors back in the NBA Finals. Boston Celtics coming off back-to-back tough seven-game series, right? Boston got it done, though, in Miami there in Game 7 on Sunday night. I was in Miami during that game, and that place is – Miami's just a different world, boys. I mean, it is – whoa. I mean, just a lot lot going on. (laughs) You should clarify, you weren't there for game seven. I did not go to game seven. We thought about it, checked the price of tickets, and decided, you know what? We'll go, we'll we'll not do that. We'll (laughs) we'll go do something else. But in hindsight, after the total carnage of the weekend, we probably should have just bought game seven tickets. (laughs) We probably, yeah, that that would have that would have been the better move for sure. But you you look at and, and I'm pumped for the NBA finals. I love the NBA. Can't wait to watch this series. But Warriors are well rested coming into this thing. And, and the one thing that Steph Curry does not have on the resume is an NBA Finals MVP. And you you look at the odds for Finals MVP, and no matter where you look, he is he's the betting favorite to bring it home this year. And I I think this could be the year. Man, I, I think Boston is worn down. You you look at the the stuff that Marcus Smart has dealt with. You look at what Robert Williams, I mean, that guy just looks broken at times for the Celtics. Uh, they just, they look a little worn out. And I, I think even though Golden State has a, has an older roster, or at least the, the key players are older as opposed to what you look at Boston with Tatum and Jalen Brown, I, I do think, you know, game one coming Thursday night, I think this is going to be a really interesting series. And as is, as important as Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are, I, 
I feel like Marcus Smart could be the key to this whole thing for Boston. You know, his ability to, to make life tough on not only Steph Curry, but Clay Thompson. And, and maybe we'll see him on Jordan Poole a little bit. But I, I just honestly, I, I, I didn't think the Warriors would get back to this point so quickly, at least. And, you know, when Kevin Durant left, especially a- after what happened to Clay Thompson with those two injuries, it's not like I'm rooting for the Warriors or anything, but it's impressive as hell what that franchise has done. Six finals in eight years. That's. And one of those years, they had the worst record in the NBA. But yeah. They missed the playoffs. Yeah. Six and, finals and in eight back. years. Unreal. Unreal. Play with an Achilles and an ACL. Draymond, dude, doesn't even shoot the ball anymore. <laughs> but he talks Jordan a lot. Poole, Jordan Poole's been fantastic for him. The, the one thing that makes me a little, little hesitant, I'm picking the Warriors, and, and I think it has, it has everything to do with them being the fresher team and the fact that they have, they've been there before. A lot of these guys, right, the key contributors, they have, They've been there, but one thing that is interesting, Boston, this little fun fact I saw on ESPN, the Boston Celtics, they're the only franchise that has a winning record against the Warriors since Steve Kerr took over in 2015. Hmm. That's a stat. Interesting. I knew you'd like that plank. I had that one dialed up for you. That's a stat. It's amazing to – to think about this Warriors team and how far they've come. I mean, you just mentioned that they're, you know, going to be the older team, which is crazy because they were, they felt so long, young for so long. And, you know, like even Draymond Green has gone from being a moron sending pictures of his junk on Snapchat for the whole world to see <laughs> to, what at times sounds like a voice of reason o- over some different he's, things he's in the a podcaster. NBA. Yeah. He's, a podcaster. he's a podcaster with a gray beard. It's, it's wild. Um, Steph Curry is, let me just say, I hate Steph Curry. I, I cannot stand the guy. I don't like the way he walks around. I don't like the way he chews on that damn mouthpiece. Don't like anything about the guy, but he's amazing. And I don't know if in my lifetime I've ever seen a guy single-handedly change their sport as much as Steph Curry has. And it may be in any sport ever with what he's done. Now, I know what you mean. You mean by the way that it's played, right? By the way that it's played. Because I would push back now all the way down to high school. Right. I, the only pushback I would have on that is uh, I do. I, I don't think anyone's changed the sport more than Tiger Woods changed golf, but that's more Fair. from the, the, how guys would train, you know, uh, how, how they took care of their bodies and then the business aspect of it. But yeah, it's hard to argue with, right? I, I mean, basketball just in my lifetime, like it's changed. I mean, it's changed so much. Yeah. And it's There's, because of Steph Curry. Yep. Like, he made like the go-to forever was having, you know, a big, and they don't even exist anymore. It's like, you got to shoot the three. If, if you're seven foot, you got to shoot the three, Ted. Yeah, you got to be Chet Holmgren. I plank w- with you being a Lakers fan. I ah. assume that you will be Talk rooting about. against the Celtics. So is oh, that, is, is it that simple? No, I root against the Warriors. Johnny come lately's little, suddenly act like they've been some sort of Mecca for the last 30 years. No, I, I, it, it's tough. I kind of root for both teams to lose. Um, I don't know if that's possible. I'm going to see if I can get some odds on that, but listen, it, it's, it's hard not to kind of be in awe of what golden state has done, man. I mean, Jordan Poole was in the G league last year. Gary Payton. The second has been cut by like every team in the NBA, right? Came and on, he come back. Yeah, right? he's supposed to play. Yeah. He's play. Andrew, Andrew Wiggins was considered like a $25 million mistake. And Golden State is – so it's hard to – it's hard not to, in all seriousness, respect what they've done. It's amazing. Boston uh, has to muck it up, right? That's the only yeah. only way they can – but, yeah, I don't even know. 
Yeah, we'll we'll see. I I hate saying this, but I, I do think the way that the series is officiated yep. will will be a big factor. And I don't want either of these teams to win the NBA title. <laughs> like I I don't want to watch either of these teams win. But I, I'm picking the Warriors because of the experience factor. And I I I just I don't want to watch the Warriors win another title, man. Warriors in five. Know. Warriors in five? There's two storylines that come out of it. The the D talk. I better watch what I say. The dynasty talk with with Golden State if they're able to kind of. Were you just gonna I, say? Were you gonna refer the, to dynasty talk as D talk? D talk. Yeah. Sorry, I, I caught myself rather you quickly said on that, that one. Man, I, I don't know. D talk. I, I didn't want to talk about the big D one. there. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's two very annoying conversations, right? The dynasty conversation, and then the Jason Tatum superstar because he's already here, right? He's an All NBA player. So that's, and I don't know what these debate shows are going to do because there's a day off between every game, uh, two days off, excuse me, between every game. Uh, it took them a week to get the damn thing started. So uh, I, yeah, good luck. I, I will say in, in Boston, I mean, if you watch a lot of NBA, you realize Boston arguably is the best defensive team. It ha- has been the best defensive team in the yep. league this season. But you look at the teams they've played, in the playoffs, right? It was, it was the Giannis show and then the Jimmy Butler show, right? And it's, it's just going to be a completely different animal with the way the Golden State plays. And really, Golden State, I'm not going to make it sound like I'm a huge X's and O's NBA guy, but just the way they share the ball, it just seems different than pretty much damn near everyone else in the league. So it'll yep. be, it'll be interesting to see with a worn down Boston coming into the, that game, it, it'll be interesting to see just how they defend, like what, at what level they defend. So I, I don't know, but. Well, if you ever want to put me in a torture chamber, just show endless footage of Steph Curry chewing on his mouthpiece and Steve Kerr at a media availability. <laughs> Wearing his mask incorrectly. There you Those go. Those are the two things that will just, like, put me <laughs> over the edge. All right, for my loser of the week, I'm going with Aaron Donald, man, because he, he was on the I Am Athlete podcast, and if you haven't listened to that, it's, it's very entertaining. But he, he, he just you, – you can't contradict yourself like this. You just can't do it. He, he said his goal was always to play eight seasons, right? And I, I, I completely understand that. He, he talked about how important winning is. Uh, said if he's got a real opportunity to win a Super Bowl, then, then it makes sense to keep playing. But th- there's this quote in there where he says, it ain't about the money. It's a business at the end of the day. <laughs> what it uh, – I – what did it is yes it's first of all it's always about the money when you're a professional athlete that's that that's that's a big deal it's a big deal and what the one part about about it that annoys me is in this interview on this podcast he's like you know if i don't play anymore i'm at peace like with his career right listen man stop it Stop giving those offensive linemen in the NFL slivers of hope that you're done <laughs> playing, dude. That's me. It's rude. Don't let them think they can breathe a sigh of relief that you're not going to be out there torturing them on Sundays. We all know you are because the Rams are going to pay your ass. You're the, they're, the, the money's going to make sense, right? It's going to make sense for you and your family. So yep. stop it. Stop giving these guys the play offensive line in the national football league, a false sense of hope that you're going to retire. It's mean, Aaron, <laughs> stop it. And yet, yeah, it, 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 it is a business. So yes, the money is, it may not be the only thing that matters, but it is kind of the main thing. If you're going to retire, you got to handle things the exact opposite. If you're going to retire or if you're going to continue playing, Either or, you got to handle things the exact opposite way Aaron Donald's going to. If you're going to retire, you need to act like 
you're energized to be the greatest of all time, and you can see yourself playing five more years in Los Angeles. That way, you sign a contract with a ton of guaranteed money up front. You get a huge payday. You nurse a hamstring for a year, and then you retire. That's how you do it, right? You don't – You if you're trying to convince them that you're going to retire, guess what they're not going to want to do? Tie a bunch of guaranteed money to the front end of a contract. It's not what you want to do. It's the wrong way to approach it. So confusing, Gabe. I have no idea what he's doing. (laughs) This is the quote. Here's one of the quotes right here. If I was to play, it's just to win another Super Bowl. But (laughs) but at the end of the day, it's still a business, and it got to make sense to me and my family. Once again, yes, you, you can't say it's not about the money, but it's still a business. No, it's about being it's about being fairly compensated for your performance. <laughs> and the guy is arguably the best defensive lineman in the history of football. Just say, man, they better break me off. Just yeah, say no. it. Like, don't don't give all of us former offensive linemen like because. Watching O lineman play against him gives me anxiety. Still, <laughs> I'm still like, oh you were, my god! You were, you were the senior oh. bowl with them for goodness oh, sakes. Yes, and I would. I never want to think about it again, Plank. But I still <laughs> see the man in my nightmares. No, it's like, stop, stop it with this. Ah, oh, I may retire. That we all know he's not retiring. And like you said, Ted, if you're not going to retire, man, you're playing it all wrong. <laughs> right. This is the, the. Is this some sort of? Reverse psychology, I'm unaware of. I don't know, man, but it's it I I disagree with the way that Aaron Donald is going about it. And he probably doesn't care because he's so damn good at football, he can do whatever he wants. And that's fine, right? He's going to the Hall of Fame, whether he it, even if he doesn't play another down. But yep. I'm just really confused by some of the statements he made on that podcast. It, it was it was perplexing to say the least. Well, he's a defensive lineman. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I, here's the thing, man. I totally understand if he was to say, I just want a Super Bowl. I'm healthy. I haven't had anything catastrophic happen in my life. I've made a ton of money. I've got options to go do some other things. I'm going to step away. I, I can understand that, but I know that's not going to happen. No. He's, he's, Within the next couple of weeks, we'll sign the biggest contract for a defensive player in the history of the NFL. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, and you got that that June first deadline where you've had some post June one cuts, so teams have a little extra money. The Rams are among them, and I still laugh every time I look at that draft class because um, Blake Bortles was the third pick in that draft, and Aaron Donald went 19th in the first round, and he was the second Rams player taken in the top 19 because they went with Greg Robinson, the offensive tackle out of Auburn at number two overall, yeah, and Greg, still got Aaron Donald in the top 15. Greg ended up making some bad life decisions. <laughs> I, my, I had a friend that was the head strength coach at Pitt when Aaron Donald was there, uh-huh. and he told me then that he was going to be, like, one of the best players ever playing in the NFL. Said he was just that, wow, that explosive, that much different than every single other person that he was around. Crazy. Well, he has not disappointed. Right. Everybody was right. Everybody was right. <laughs> episode two nineteen in the books, the Chris Plank episode. Thank you. I love this show. So getting to hang out the whole time was like a dream come true. You're Thank you, Plankson. gentlemen. See well, you guys. Well, We'll have a new podcast that'll drop Monday morning. Creed Humphrey episode on Monday. Just a reminder, you can hear Teddy from 3 to 6 on 94.7 The Ref. You can hear me on Sirius XM Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. Have an awesome weekend. Until next time, we appreciate you all for listening. Do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.